Good day and welcome to our short demonstration and explanation of how to download MySQL uh, server on uh, and install it on uh, Windows 10 or Server 2016. We'll go through all of the quick settings and uh, roll through this quite quickly. It's not that challenging. So what you do is go to dev.mysql.com slash downloads as you can see up here. Or you could just Google download MySQL and uh, click on community and um, then you can click on MySQL Community Server. These are more advanced features that we're not going to talk about today, like the you know, cluster server and things like that. We'll just go into the community server. That's a bit weird here. Uh, what you'll see is um, uh, when you scroll down in this general availability, I'm currently, the current build is uh, 8013. Uh, in the drop down, uh, we, we want to, in our case, we want to select Microsoft Windows. And um, uh, you can see down here that you can download the files, but these files are not an installer, which um, is not all that helpful if you just want to click next and get through the thing. So what you want to do then is click on go to download page. And uh, this pops up and you'll notice now that there's just the one operating system here. And you'll notice that the files are a little larger and you'll also notice that there's a 32-bit, um, uh, but not a 64-bit. And um, it's a bit confusing. So the short version goes like this. Um, it's a 32-bit installer, but it will install a 64-bit version. So, and it tells you that up here. So, uh, if you, uh, basically, if you're running 64-bit, which of course you are, because everybody is, you will just, just click download uh, and uh, install away. Now, the question of which one of these to choose is an interesting one. This web community uh, is a, um, hmm, how to word this? It's tiny. What it does is it gives you an installer um, uh, which lets you select what you want and then uh, it will download it for you. Or you can just download the whole thing right away and get it over with. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go to this one at the bottom that's just labeled MySQL Installer Community. And you'll notice here the difference is MySQL Installer Web Community. Now we just want the whole thing. We want the big one, 300 uh, meg, and click download. This will take a minute or two to download. Uh, yeah, so you get prompted for an Oracle account. I don't want it. Don't like Oracle. So just click down. Uh, download. I'm going to save it on the desktop. And Bedingo, it's going to run. Well, it's going to download. It's not going to run. So we can minimize it. And let's roll through it. So if you right click on it, and this is Windows 10 or Server 2016, and you right click and select properties, you'll notice that in the bottom right hand corner, it's been blocked. So you probably want to do the unblock. It's certainly not necessary, but it saves, uh, saves a click later on. So um, just that's what I would do. Right click on it, select unblock. Okay, and, th and all it means is that uh, you've intentionally downloaded it and that it is not, um, uh, that this product is not a super common product for Microsoft. So you, uh, it's just saying it doesn't know what it is. So let's go to double click it and run the installer. <coughs> Preparing to install. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. So we've got a prompt saying yes, we'll run it as an admin there. Let it rip. Yes, we do want to do the install. It's unpacking itself at this point. We're going to let this run, by the way, in real time. Uh, so if you wish, you can skip through it. Uh, normally, we edit out the blocks, but I want people to see how long some of these things take. So, uh, and none of them uh, take more than, say, two, three minutes. So just be aware of that. If you want to skip ahead for a few seconds, just go ahead. OK, yep, run the launcher. Okay, so this is your license agreement. I read it carefully. Next. Okay, developer default. This will install pretty much everything. Um, you can look through here and it'll tell you what it's going to install, but pretty much everything. <coughs> server only is if you're just going to install the server. Client is if you just want the tools, so you've already got a server running somewhere and you just want to run the management uh, tool somewhere else. Full is, is everything. 
Uh, we're going to do custom though, um, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, basically, I do want to select things. Um, so let's go through next. And what we want to choose here is to expand the MySQL servers. You know, you think you'd be able to click here and and then uh, and then click on that uh, arrow, but you can't. So you have to drill all the way down to the actual install, the actual product, and then click to add it. It's a little bit annoying, but not a big deal. And you also want to get the workbench. So let's go to the workbench, and bingo. Workbench is just the GUI, by the way, the management console to run it. So you don't need it, but it's um, uh, it's handy to have, and uh, I wouldn't run without it. Um, so I'd, let's install both of those. And uh, something curious here is that it doesn't tell you um, where it's going to install. So um, that's an issue. Uh, there's not a there's not a way to uh, through this install uh, method to say, hey, I would like this to install in you know D drive, my applications, whatever. It's going to install in the C in the default C uh, program files uh, directory and go from there. So just take note of that. You, I believe you can uh, script the install and have it uh, go through command line uh, to wherever you would like, but uh, you cannot do it through the GUI. Okay, so what this is saying is, hey, you, this is a fresh machine and you don't have um, uh, C++ 2015. Um, so that's a mistake and you need, to, you need to get that fixed. So both of these, both SQL Server and Workbench, are both missing the same component. So we can select either of them and then just click Execute and it will install it. It's installing. You'll see it pop up in a second. Yeah, so that, there we go. There it is. I agree to the uh, Microsoft Visual C. Plus plus 25, 64-bit installed. Very, very fast. Yeah, gone. Now you'll see these are both two little green check marks, and we click Next. And uh, here it just says it's ready to install, so let's go. Let's click Execute. You don't have to click show details. It's just this gets boring otherwise, so it's something to look at. And you can see it's installing in C program files. Uh, if it was the 32-bit version, it would install in C program files bracket x86 bracket, but of course it's not. This is the 64-bit version, so it's just going into C program files. Anyway, so it's rolling along nicely, 76% up here. How exciting. Do, 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 Okay, so yes, I'm just clicking this randomly now for no apparent reason, just to amuse myself. So, we're going to just let that run. It'll sit to 99 for a minute. I don't know what it's doing. Well, let's see what it's doing. Oh, it's just doing a clean out. All right. Groovy. Now, uh, you'll notice on the left-hand side here where you, it's told us we're almost all the way through, so let's click Next. And uh, I'm going to, um, there's nothing to click here. You can click, but it won't do anything. So just click Next, and it will launch the configuration. Now, this comes up and it says, hey, do you want uh, to run the uh, the Eno d d database, or do you just want to run a standalone MySQL server, sort of the classic uh, thing? So um, I'm going to run the standalone MySQL classic, so let's go Next. And here it's going to ask you what type of computer it is. And again, this has mostly to do with memory and, uh, and resources. So there's, uh, the development computer is going to use as little as it can on your computer so that if this is a Windows 10 machine, for instance, you know, you can still run Word and Surf and do whatever else. At the other end of that is a dedicated computer. And if it's a dedicated computer, it's going to do nothing but SQL, in which case it's going to use as much, uh, as, many, as much of your resources as it can. So in this case, um, uh, so this is not a dedicated computer. If I was working at home and this was just me playing around and I wanted it on Windows 10, I would select development computer. In this particular install though, this is an actual production install I'm going to keep. So I'm going to select server computer and that's sort of somewhere in between. And if you read this, which is so hard to do, it'll actually tell you that. What, uh, here it is, have medium memory usage. So let's click on that. Um, uh, so let's go through. It's TCP IP will be the connection. Named pipes and shared memory are pretty much gone now. Yes, they're still supported. Yes, they still work, but um, there are very few things use them anymore. So nothing new uses them. Uh, and the port number. So 3306 is the default configuration, the default port number. 
Um, it's an obscure enough port that uh, uh, it's a combination of an obscure enough port and MySQL being a big enough product that almost certainly nobody else is using it. Uh, now, you may have another instance of MySQL that is using it. If you do, you'll see a little yellow bang here. A bang is just a yellow uh, triangle with an exclamation mark in the middle. In which case, select a different port. Then you just have to keep, keep you know, just have to remember it. But anyway, I'm just going to select, um, I'm just going to leave it at the default. The X protocol port, um, that's MySQL stuff, and that used to be further down in the, the install uh, process, but they've just jammed it in here, which makes a lot of sense. So just leave this alone, basically, uh, for almost everybody. Uh, just uh, leave this alone. Let's click Next. Now, what type of password do you want to use? Do you want it to be the new, uh, you know, high secure passwords uh, that came with uh, version 8, which is what we're installing here, or do you want to use legacy? So really what this boils down to is what your systems uh, that are connecting to it support. So if you're building something new, great, just use strong passwords and be on your way. I'm going to use legacy because I'm going to select legacy so that it's more compatible with other things. Um, but let's uh, roll through this. Now you have to come up with a password. That's the bang I was talking about, by the way. doesn't like a password. So I'm going to just type in a password, something that's, um, uh, you know, complex enough and happy. Um, there we go. I could uh, also select an add user here. Oh, to be clear, this is the root password. So the user account here is root, R-O-O-T. The password is whatever the password is for that. But you could add additional users by clicking add user. And in here, you just put in whatever username you want and whatever password you want and what security level you'd like them to be. So if you want them to be just a you know, user admin or a process admin, that's fine. Generally, you're going to want them to be, a, well, if you're small, you're going to want them to be a DB admin. Um, and uh, the hosts would just be, you know, if you've got a whole bunch of servers you're running, you can, uh, you can select it. But I'm just going to leave it at all hosts. And in fact, I'm just going to press cancel because um, I'm just fine for the sake of this demonstration with the root um, user and password. And for an awful lot of installs, that's all people will use. Um, I would suggest you make sure you're not using a weak password. For the record, the password I used is not weak. It's simply that the, well, the system's calculating that it is, but it is not. So I've got uppercase, lowercase, uh, numbers, and you can see it's fairly long. It's not a common uh, set of strokes, but anyway, just be aware of that. So don't be too weirded out by weak, but for God's sakes, don't put in one, two, three, four, or passwords, or, or password, or something stupid like that. Use an actual password. And you're going to need to know it, so we're either write it down or commit it to memory. Let's click Next. Okay, so uh, this is saying um, MySQL will run as a service in the background, uh, if you'd like. And of course, almost everybody will like, which is why these are defaulted to on. If, however, you wanted it, if you, if however you wanted MySQL to install, but not run every time you booted your machine up, you know, say you're a dev and you're working on your own uh, Windows 10 PC and uh, you're only you know, using MySQL once in a while, well, you may want to uncheck that and um, uh, have MySQL not start up and not use system resources um, all the time. But that's going to be very unusual. Almost everybody's going to leave these on. So uh, same thing with the uh, run uh, the Windows service as. Yes, you could set it to a custom user, uh, but we'll just leave it as a system account. So the defaults here are pretty good. And you can call this whatever you want, uh, but I think that name is, is, is a good name. So. Um, let's go through here, uh, and that's it. So at this point, we just click Execute, and you'll see the dots going. How exciting is that? And this will take, oh, two minutes. Um, this uh, is a virtual machine I'm working on, a Server 2016 box, uh, R1, by the way, and it is not um, overly horsepowered. It, it, it's um, minimal. So let's see how it goes. So let's go to services and just make sure that it all started up, although it did, but I'll just show you that it did. So sir Let's go to services. So there you go. You can see MySQL is running and happy. So I'm just going to just just going to close that. Uh, I'm going to click Finish here, and it's just telling you it's done. Uh, on principle, I'm going to deselect this, but I, I will, uh, we'll leave it on. What the hell? So I'll click Finish, and we'll show you how to get into it. So you click Start, and um, 
uh, you'll see here that my workbench, which is what I just told it to start automatically, will launch in a minute. And what that is is just the GUI. So um, I'll show you that, but I'll also show you the uh, command line. Uh, so let's go into the command line. It asks for the password. That's the one you just created. Uh, so I'm going to enter that. And Bedingo, we're in. Um, if you'd like to create a database, you just type in the command create space database, and you know a few other bits and pieces here. And let's call this um, let's call this database. Um, oh, let's call it test one. Clever name, huh? So there we go. And bank created. Okay. So now we can we could play with the the command line more, but I don't want to. So let's close it. Now, when you uh, get to the MySQL Workbench, which I had start automatically, but I could have had it, I could have started it by clicking here again. Um, what you'll get is this MySQL Workbench, and um, uh, what you want to do is go to the um, go to the uh, go to the home here, and uh, just double click on this local instance, and uh, it's asking for the password again. So there it is, and we'll show you. There's two databases here. One is the system database. And you can see the tables here on the left, sysconfig, so on and so forth, pretty happy. And the other is the test database we, we created, which has no tables in it. That's about it. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.